All right, hello. This is uh, online class thirteen. Uh, today we're going to cover section seven point three, and here we're going to estimate population means. And in this section, we're going to assume that our population SDs are known. It's Wednesday, November 7th, Fall 2012, Math 125, and my name is Carl Perez. All right, recall. I want to recall Section 7.2 for just a minute. In Section 7.2, what we did, we looked at a large population, and we were interested in some characteristic and we set our population proportion with some characteristic of interest was little p and because populations are huge we then said we want to estimate it because we can't know for sure what our population proportion is it's got millions possibly billions of measurements right all right so what we did we took a sample and in this sample we computed a sample proportion And of course, as you know, we use p hat to estimate little p. And we did it in a couple of ways. You know, we did it, one possible way is to use a point estimate and to use p hat as a point estimate of little p. And perhaps a better way was to create a confidence interval estimate. And to create that confidence interval, we actually used our sample data. And we introduced this mysterious value E, which the calculator computes for us upstream. E is our margin of error, referred to in throughout this chapter. And I want to give you the formula for E. Now, don't panic because the calculator computes E for us upstream. Well, what I want to highlight here just for a moment is that the actual value of our margin of error depends on a Z value and properties of the Z score. Well, TI 83 calculates these upper and lower limits with this command and it's one prop Z interval All right? and I just want to highlight that this Z indicates the Z value being used upstream to compute our margin of error. All right. Well if we've got some, let's say, whatever, 90% confidence interval for a P. Now, can we ask the question, is P actually in this interval? Let's see. Does the interval actually contain P? Now, you can't say that. You can't say for sure because we never really know what P is. Remember, this is this population proportion indicates a population that's way too big to measure and take raw numbers out of, right? Uh, typically, we never know. Let me write this down. Right. But we can say. that with a given level of confidence and typically that level of confidence is given to us let's say for argument's sake let's say 95 percent seems to be the most commonly used one that 95 percent 
of similarly scroll down of similarly similarly constructed intervals will actually contain mu or so will actually contain this little p okay all right, now nothing new here. I just wanted to take a look back at section 7.2 because the structure of problems in 7.3 are largely going to be the same. Now in section 7.3 we're not going to be estimating P anymore, our population proportion. We're going to estimate population mean. And as you may recall, the symbol for population mean is accepted as mu. Now again, the assumption that's made in this section is that our population SD is already known or is assumed to be known. Again, I'll draw a similar diagram that I drew for section 7.2. Instead of a population proportion, I'm going to indicate a population mean of many, many values of some characteristic of interest. And again, the idea here is typically we will never know what mu is in gigantic, huge populations. So largely, I'm going to follow the same model from a sample. I'll compute a sample mean. Now, of course, we know that sample mean notation is x bar. So what I'm going to do is use x bar to estimate mu in this section, 7.3. In the last section, we used p hat to estimate p. And again, there's two ways. We can use x bar as a point estimate of mu. And just say whatever our sample mean, whatever number our sample mean turns into, that's going to be our guess, our best guess of what mu is. But just like in section 7.2, maybe there's a better way. Right? And a better way would be to create a confidence interval for mu. And what we'll do is create a window, kind of a bucket a high value and a low value that hopefully will contain mu. Hmm? Well, the idea again we never know for sure because populations are too big to actually grind out uh, numerical values of mu. Well, what I can say is that well, with a certain level of confidence we can assure that hopefully mu is contained within these limits. Alright, just like in the last section calculator will compute these limits for us using this formula. Now again, it's cap E is still going to be our margin of error. I'm not going to derive the formula for us. Again, I just want you to know that it involves computation of an intermediate z value. Mm -hmm. So there's our formula for margin of error. You don't need to memorize this formula or even use this formula in this section. Okay, in the TI-83 or of course 84, we're going to use a new function to create this new type of confidence interval and this function is called z interval. All right. 
as you might guess, this command, this operator, exists in the same menu in the same tests submenu where we found the one prop z int command as in section 7.2. All right, let me run through an example and show you how to use this command. I imagine most of us could figure it out all on our own. I want to cite example one on page 347. So please turn there now. and familiarize yourself with the problem statement and come back when you're ready. All right. In this problem, we are asked to create a 95% confidence interval estimate of the mean weight of all adult men. All right, in wide strokes, we've got a huge population of adult men all those millions and millions of adult men have a mean weight which typically we never know okay to estimate this population mean weight I can draw a sample and from this sample the book tells us we get the following information well we get a sample of size 40 the sample mean weight of adult men from this sample is 172.55 pounds and we are told that the population standard deviation for all adult men's weights is 26 in pounds. All right. So the book asks us then in part A find the best point estimate of the mean weight of the population of all men. So, okay, I'll say my point estimate of mu, the mean weight of all men, is going to be my sample mean weight from the men I drew in the sample, and that's 172.55 pounds. All right, so not much to part at, right? We're basically using x bar to estimate our unknown mu value. And maybe it's close, maybe it's not close. It depends on the drawing of the sample, I suppose. All right, perhaps more interestingly, part B. Create a 95% confidence interval estimate for the population mean weight of all men. All right, and to do this, we're going to use, again, our Z interval command. So to find the Z interval command, you know, you got to look in the same place where you found the one prop Z int command. On your calculator, press stat. Then select the test submenu. Then scroll down and find that Z interval command. All right, and then you'll be prompted for the following information. Let me run through this too, for you because some things have changed a little bit. The book asks you, I'm sorry, the calculator asks you for an input mode. Don't pick data. We're going to use this command with raw data in our face-to-face -face class. When summary statistics are given to you in the problem, as they are here, pick the stats mode for data entry. I'm sorry, pick the stats mode for input entry, okay? All right, let me sure to get, let me do it all along here as I go along. Stats, Z interval. All right, the book, I'm sorry, the calculator prompts me then for a population standard deviation. Well, the population standard deviation is told to us in the problem, so I'll enter in 26 as stated, right? The sample mean is 172.55, so I enter that in the calculator. The sample size is 40. Enter that. The confidence level. Well, 
we are told, let me see, be sure to get the right one, 0.95. So enter it in. 95% is 0.95. And I then select calculate, press enter. And the calculator comes up with the following values in open interval type notation. All right, what's going on here is the calculator is based on that formula for E create an upper and lower bound for a confidence interval estimate for mu. Hmm. Now I would like to give this answer in what I call double-sided inequality notation. Again, we're estimating mu. So my upper boundary for mu in this confidence interval will be 180.61 and my lower boundary for mu in this confidence interval will be 164.49. Alright, so there's my confidence interval in double-sided inequality notation and I'll call this my 95 percent confidence interval for mu. Okay. All right, so that's how to use your z-interval command. All right, let me get a new screen. I want to do another example before us, before we call it a day. All right. And what I'd like to do is one in the homework list. This is exercise number 24 on page 353. So please pause now and familiarize yourself with that problem statement and come back when you're ready. Alright, in this problem we're talking about red blood cell counts in adults. Mm -hmm. So in particular, we are trying to estimate the mean blood, red blood cell count for all adults of all time. Now that's a population. And our population mean for adult red blood cell counts is something we will never really know for sure because there's just too many people to check. All right, so again, what we're going to do is draw a sample and we are told in the problem statement there's 50 adults in this sample. The sample mean for red blood cell counts is 4.63 and we are told the population standard deviation is 0.54. All right. Alright, so what we're going to ask then, well, part A asks us for find the best point estimate of the mean red, red blood cell count of all adults. Okay, so my point estimate for mu, which typically we never know, is going to be x bar, which we get from our sample, is 4.63 in red blood cell counts per microliter, I believe the book says, right? All right, well, the idea here is maybe 4.63 is a good estimate for mu. Maybe 4.63 is not a good estimate for mu. Uh, the idea here is maybe there's a better way. The book asks us to construct a 99% confidence interval for mu. 
Right. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, again, we largely use the power of the TI-8384 calculator to grind out these limits for us. Again, we'll pick STAT, hit your STAT button, select and enter your test submenu, and then your Z interval command. Remember the book, I'm sorry, the calculator uses a Z-score formula burned upstream to generate my margin of error. All right, once we call up that command, again, for your input mode, for now, we're going to use stats. Later on in the face-to-face -face class, we'll use data as our input mode, but since we are given summary statistics of the sample, in this problem, we're going to use STAT input entry. All right. The calculator prompts us for a sigma. Enter 0.54. The calculator then prompts us for a sample mean. And of course, that's 4.63. The calculator then prompts us for a sample size, and we enter in 50. The calculator then prompts us for a confidence level. And let me be sure here, it's 99% here, right? Yes, a 99% confidence interval. So I'll enter in 0.99. All right, I'll then select Calculate. And, of course, hit Enter. Very similar to what we did in Section 7.2. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on, I got problems here. Stat tests Z interval. I plugged in the wrong confidence level. Forgot to change it from the last problem. All right, so let me check it again. Point nine nine. Calculate and enter. All right, the calculator returns to us. I think I'll round this off to do to do two decimal places if that's all right. 4.43 on the high end and 4.83 on the low end. And now don't lose sight of what we're trying to estimate here. What the calculator has given us is high and low values with which we estimate which with which with we which with we are estimating mu, right? Well, the idea here is mu might lie in this bucket, mu might not end up in this bucket. Typically, we never know for sure. What I can say is this. My 99% confidence interval for mu, I'm going to indicate it in double-sided inequality fashion. There is the answer to my problem as stated in the book. And I can't say for sure that mu will or will not land within these limits, but I can say this, and the book calls this an interpretative statement, that 99% of similarly constructed intervals will actually contain mu. I can't say for sure whether one particular interval will contain mu, but based on principles of probability, 
I can say in the large scheme of things, based on sample data, that almost all of these intervals will actually contain mu. All right, we were pretty much at the 26 minute point, so I'm gonna call it a day. And this concludes online class 13, section 7.3, estimating population means with sigma known. That is all.